Good Thursday morning after Ash Wednesday. Today's really an interesting set of texts. It's from Deuteronomy, a speech by Moses, and then our Lord, and he almost contradicts it, and he doesn't. He radicalizes it. Listen, I'll show you. That. Moses said to the people, Today I have set before you life and prosperity, death and doom. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I enjoin on you today, loving him, walking in his ways, keeping his commandments, statutes, and decrees, think of the Mosaic law, you will live and grow numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to occupy. He thinks of very much in terms of this world, okay? The promised land, eh? If, however, you turn away your hearts and will not listen, but are led astray and adore us and serve other gods, I'll tell you now that you will certainly perish. You will not have a long life on the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and occupy. He brings down that divine command now. I call heaven and earth today to witness against you. I have set before you life and death, the blessings and the curse. Choose life then, that you and your descendants may live by loving the Lord your God, heeding his voice and holding fast to him. For that will mean life for you, a long life for you to live on the land of, that the Lord swore he would give to your father, your fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. See? See? It's a great line. He said, huh? Choose life. Now, what looks into what Christ says? He's going to radicalize that in a way it would have never crossed Moses' mind. But yet, boy, does it enrich what he's saying. The Jordan here is not the Jordan River, but death. Okay? Watch what he says. Jesus said to his disciples, remember, he is the new Moses, the new lawgiver, the new redeemer, the savior, you see? The son of man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed and on the third day be raised. That's the, that's the kerygma, the fundamental story of the Paschal mystery, death and resurrection of Christ, okay? That's the core of the gospel. Remember what I said before, you start with that. That's the core message. Then he applies it. See? If anyone wishes to come after me, right, what, does he, what must he do? He must deny himself. Not just keep the law. Thank you, Moses. He must deny himself. And do what? And take up his cross. That's the cross of being cursed. He must take up his cross daily and follow me. That is not Moses. That is beyond Moses' wildest imagination. Moses says, keep the command, love God and keep the commandments. In Christ, it says you have to take up your cross. You have to enter into the Paschal mystery. It's more radical. Way, way beyond anything Moses could have thought of. Way more radical. And this is the greatest line of, this is a powerful line for whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. See? That's a great line. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. Can you imagine this? Luke is writing to uh, Greek Christians at the time. They were being martyred all over the place. Hmm? He's reassuring them. He who loses his life for my sake will save it not just crossing the desert or the Red Sea, thing. not crossing the Jordan, it's crossing life and death. See, so Christianity radicalizes it to the Mosaic promise. It radicalizes the notion of redemption. And it's reassuring that the way of the cross is the way of life. See, a prosperity beyond the wildest of any imagination, a prosperity in communion with the Godhead himself directly through the intimacy of Christ, as it were. He says, what profit is there for one to gain the whole world, yet lose or forfeit, forfeit oneself? Okay. Christ, this is the, called the paradox of the cross. And this text really struck me. There was a movie we used to show when I was in the retreat work in Baltimore. That's a long time ago. It was 50 years ago. It was a film. It was done by the... I think it was the World Council of Churches. I'm, I'm sure of it. It was called This Solitude Through Which We Go As I. In case anybody wants to Google it up, you could find it. 
And it was a series of f photographs. It was a series of photographs depicting the 20th century. Now, this is 1970, okay? This is the first 70 years of the 20th century. And what it showed was the horrors and the loneliness of life, the solitude through which we go as I. And it showed, um, I would say, the barrenness of life. It showed it. And it culminated, that loneliness culminated in the violence of the Second World War. And the final scene is the bombing of Hiroshima with the atomic bomb. That ended the first two-thirds of that film. It's just a series of photographs. God, it's 50 years ago. I'm trying to remember it. And then it showed the emergence of the gospel of faith. He who loses his life will find it. And I, be, I forget how it was symbolized, but I saw the counter to the, to the horrors of the pursuit of power, what Hitler said, the triumph of the will, the will to power, Nietzsche. It was rather the will to self-sacrifice. And out of that came life. And I saw, and when we used to show it to the kids, I used to say, no, those kids are grandfathers now, okay, 50 years ago. They were 18 years old. They're 68 years old now, 67, 68 years old. I said to them, in the course of your life, you'll either choose, you'll either choose your, the will to power or the will to self-sacrifice. You will choose one or the other. You'll choose to be a friend or you'll choose to be an enemy. And my kids in class right now, I'd say the difference between, you have to know philosophy for this, but Thomas Hobbes said, we are enemy to everyone else. Everyone's our enemy. You, you always seek to impose your own will or to protect yourself, but what you never do is love. And I said, and I contrast Hobbes with, friend, with Aristotle's friendship, let alone Christianity, where you love and virtuously love one another. And I said to him that the end result is if you live a Hobbesian world, you will die alone. But if you live as a friend, in the deepest sense, virtuously, and in the Christian ideal of self-sacrifice, you won't die alone. He who loses his life for my sake will find it. You find it in the richness of the church, and I don't mean the institution, I mean the body of Christ. If you take up your cross, you self, to take up the cross of self-sacrifice, you love with the generosity of Christ, then you will have the fullness of the body of Christ. If not, you'll get what you paid for. And that's certainly true in life. When I, my pastoral experience is better than anything philosophically. I, I teach more and more in the last 10 years, 15, out of my pastoral experience because I see the, the play out of, of the will to power. I see what generosity, I see what the virtues and the vices mean. I see what the importance of the cross, not just religiously, but humanistically. That if you live, you, if you're out for yourself, you'll die alone. That's the way I put it. And no one will care. And I've seen it. I've seen it, I've witnessed it, and I've also witnessed the generosity of love, how it transcends all forms of failure and everything else. We're not perfect, but we can be lovingly virtuous. We can try. We can take up our cross. We could take up our cross daily to, em to embrace, let's say, the demands of life and love rather than trying to impose on it. Maybe that's what I'm saying here. If you wish to come after, you must deny yourself. Whoever wishes to save his life, meaning looking out for yourself, you're going to lose. You are going to lose. But if you're willing to lose your life, to sacrifice to the other, for my sake, and I would say for the sake of the other, you'll save it, and you'll have more than you can wildly imagine. Intimacy comes in human relationships, and I believe with the divine, and I believe with wisdom itself, comes from the courage the courage to be vulnerable, the courage to give your heart to another, to Christ, to God, to each other. If you haven't got the courage to give yourself away in, in, vulnerable, in vulnerability, you'll never possess anything except your own will. And believe me, in the end, you'll, you'll die of your own starvation. Boy, God, I've seen that. I have seen it. It's the truth. And it's not some grand scale like an Adolf Hitler. It's sometimes it's just in people's homes. When one's ego, and you see the row of the ego, I'm out for myself, what's in it for me? Ask that question, what's in it for me? You lose. If you ask what's in it for you, you win. That's taking up the cross. It's when you say, what's in it for you? I love you more than I love myself. I will do whatever it is for you that you will flourish. And the paradox is, so will you.